Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make a DIY lava lamp. Hi, my name is Sarah. My pronouns are she, they, and I'm a student studying Masters of Science Communication at the Australian National University. To make our lava lamps, we're gonna need a container, preferably something tall and clear. It can be glass, it can be plastic. Something like a glass at home will work really well. I'm gonna be using this flask. We're also gonna need some water, just anything, tap water is fine. Some sodium bicarbonate, you might also see it called uh, just bicarb or baking soda. Cooking oil, plain white vinegar, and some food coloring. Because we're using vinegar, it might be a little bit smelly. It can be good to do this near a window or outside. And because we're using food coloring, it might get a little bit messy. Try not to do this near anything that you don't want stained. Okay, so let's get started. First, we're gonna pour water into our container. We're gonna fill it about a quarter of the way. So this is a 500 milliliter flask. I'm gonna put about 200 milliliters of water in here. And it doesn't need to be exact. Next, we're gonna get our vinegar. And we're gonna use about the same amount of vinegar. About 200 milliliters, maybe a little less. And then our food coloring. I'm gonna use red because we're making a lava lamp and I think it should look like lava. Putting red on everything. And then we'll carefully pour our oil on top. For the oil, we're gonna use about as much oil as we use both the water and vinegar together. So if I used about 200 milliliters of water and 200 milliliters of vinegar, I'm gonna use about 400 milliliters of oil. But the point is just to have a good layer of oil floating on top of everything at the end. And after we pour the oil in, one thing we notice immediately is that the oil doesn't wanna mix with the water and vinegar. They all sort of start to separate. So you'll see these bubbles of water and vinegar and food coloring kind of popping themselves so they split back up. That's gonna be really important for our experiment later. And our last step is to pour just a couple small spoonfuls of baking soda on the top. First one, and then we'll let it sit for a second. Then after it starts to sink, there it goes, we'll do one more. And then watch what happens. So you can see immediately, once the baking soda gets to the bottom, it starts to give off these bubbles of gas. And as the gas bubbles rise up to the top, they seem to carry some of our red liquid up to the top as well. But then we can see, and as soon as the bubbles start to pop, our little balls of water and vinegar float back down. So what's happening? This is one way to do it. But you could get the same effect in a couple of different ways. So let's try something else. Something's clearly going on between the bubbles coming off of our bicarbonate and the density difference between our water and our oil. So maybe if we try this a different way, we can get some more information. Okay, what if we try mixing our ingredients in a different order and see if that gives us a different reaction? So for this one, I'm gonna start with a cup that we're gonna add our baking soda to. About the same amount. A couple small spoonfuls just to cover the bottom. And then into this cup, we're gonna add our cooking oil. And fill it about halfway. So it's about the same amount of oil. Really gently, because we don't wanna mix up too much of the baking soda. In the second cup, we're gonna add our vinegar. However much oil we have, we want about half of that in the vinegar, maybe a little bit more. So if you had two of the same cups, it would be about a third of one cup vinegar and half of the other cup of oil. And into our vinegar, we're gonna add our food coloring. I think I'll use blue this time. And it only takes a couple of drops. So this time, instead of pouring the oil onto our vinegar and then adding the baking soda, we've got our baking soda and, baking soda and oil in one cup. And we're gonna pour our vinegar over the top. What do you think will happen? Let's find out. Oh, wow. So this time we can see that even before some of the vinegar hits the bottom where our baking soda is, we're already getting those little balls of separation. So they must not be related to the gas. But then when the gas starts, we kind of get the same reaction. We've got these streams of our vinegar floating up to the top, but when they get there, after they fizz for a little while, they fall back down to the bottom. So maybe now we know a little bit more about what's going on. 
So with both of our experiments, we can see that there's actually two separate things happening that make our lava lamp work. The first one, the one we saw very clearly in our second, our second experiment, is that water and vinegar or vinegar and oil have very different densities, so they don't like to mix. We say that oil is hydrophobic. It doesn't wanna mix with water. It will always separate out. And vinegar, which did mix with our water in the first experiment, is hydrophilic. They get along just fine. So when we have our vinegar or our vinegar and water floating through the oil, it doesn't wanna mix in. So when it gets to the top, it's denser and it doesn't wanna like, it doesn't want to combine. So it'll fall back down. But what's causing the bubbles? That's not density, that's something else. That's because when we use our bicarbonate, it's actually a base and our vinegar is an acid. What happens when you mix an acid and a base together? Well, this, they off gas. The base and the vinegar combine and the CO2 is, CO2 or carbon dioxide is let out. That carbon dioxide, it's a gas, which means it's the least dense of all. So as the gas is released at the bottom of our solution, all those little bubbles of gas rise up to the top, carrying with it some of our solution from before. As they get to the top, they're still less dense than the oil until they all fizz and pop. And when there's no more little gas bubbles to hold up our mixture of water and vinegar or just the vinegar, the density of those bubbles is still heavier than the oil, so they fall back down. We've done this two different ways. The first, by adding all of our acids to the bottom and the oil to the top and then the baking soda to drop it down through. And the second, by starting with all of our oil and baking soda in one and then pouring our dense vinegar on top of it. But you could do a lot of different things to see what happens, to see how they change. You could try, for example, a different container. What if it was really tall? What if it was really skinny? Do you think that would change it? It'd probably change how the gas is able to float up through the top. So that could be kind of cool. We also change the amount of acid that we put in. In the first experiment, we diluted the vinegar with water and we can see that caused kind of smaller bubbles and a little bit slower of a reaction. What do we think would happen if we added even more water? Would it still work? When would it stop working? We could try that. What else do we know about density? Warmer liquids are usually less dense than colder liquids. So something else we could try is changing the temperature, either of the water or the oil, or both, and seeing if that changes our experiment. So now it's your turn. Why don't you try some of these and try a couple variations to see what happens. Just be careful about your hands.